how's your, how's your weekend going is it snowing where you guys are at too or no no not at all is it is it snowing in minnesota right now yeah it's been like flurries all day it's damn like, on friday it was like 80 degrees and today it's like down to like that's, 40 that's 35. what we're dealing with basically so it's supposed <laughs> to snow tomorrow i think a little bit we're in lansing michigan right now okay um so but it was yeah it got up to 80 degrees this past week and it was like summertime and then now we're yeah so that's that's just how it goes i guess yeah bummers of the midwest you know <laughs> I, i'm loving it man we're both from california originally so we're still learning the midwest every year <laughs> year by year yeah uh well i'm sure you've started to figure out that spring doesn't actually start until like june and then it's like a week of spring and then immediately yeah, just it humidity yeah. it doesn't really exist i've found yeah it's <laughs> not, spring not, is yeah, just not. this weird unpredictable period of time where you don't know what the hell you're gonna get but we love it out here though for sure hell yeah well uh if you've checked out in the episodes i do always start an episode with the crack of a beer i don't know if you have unopened yes, ones sir uh, hell yeah yeah <laughs> you got the <laughs> opener right there if you want we have uh this is two hearted IPA from Bells in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. Oh, a good old God. modello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the duality here. <laughs> All right. In three, two, one. Welcome to the Beers of Bands Podcast with your host, Michael Torres. what is up everyone welcome back to another episode of beers with bands uh this week i'm sitting down with Pitt, uh from michigan uh how how are you guys doing i'm sitting down with mitch and ian uh how y'all doing we're good man excited to be here yeah dude uh thank thanks for bearing with me i I've, it's been a crazy year so far uh so i apologize for the delay in doing this but I mean, oh, you good. obviously have been still kicking and doing a lot of stuff in, in the background, and we'll get to all that. Uh, before we jump too far, um, like I mentioned, you guys are Pit. Uh, you guys are like a sludgy, hardcore band. Uh, when I say sludgy, I mean good, wholehearted sludginess um, in there. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, like I mentioned, you guys are Mitch and Ian. Can you just say uh, what you do in Pit? Yeah, so I'm Mitch. I do uh, vocals and play guitar. And I'm Ian. I play the drums. And you'll notice we don't have a bass player, so the guitar sort of takes care of all of that. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that it's just the two of you doing this, because the sound that you guys are putting out, it sounds obviously like you're recording uh, kind of like full instruments, so it sounds so full and heavy that you forget that it's only just you two doing this. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> That's the idea, is that we... You know, we got to a point where we realized, like, we're probably not going to have a third person. I think it's just going to be us. So we, you know, going into recording and certainly going into playing shows is just a matter of making the sound full enough and big enough that it, you know, makes up for all of that. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, well, to kind of start off at the beginning, uh, you guys have been a band, I think, from my data collection uh for about six months or a little bit more than six months i think you guys played your first show in december yeah um, yeah like like we kind of mentioned you're both uh from california originally both now live in michigan um i'm guessing you didn't both know each other in california and then moved to michigan together like yeah. take me back to like the start of of finding each other and like forming pit um yeah in the beginning so it's um it's interesting so we um right so we both originally are from california kind of individually um and i'm originally from redding way up north i went to school in santa cruz i lived in the bay area in la for a while came out here about two years ago and about this time last year i started really looking around for people to play music with because i was just i i back in california i was in bands i i did all that stuff was really, really missing it in my life and found a Craigslist post for somebody up in Mount, or you were even farther up north at that point. Yeah, yeah. And um, found a Craigslist post from a guy who wanted to start a hardcore punk band. He was a drummer and he had some of his recordings linked there as well. And I don't know, it, it was kind of, you know, 
we kind of just clicked right away. We probably met for the first time, not until like August, maybe. Yeah. Like we, we reached out in like June, like we connected. I was in Kalamazoo. He was way up North at the time. I moved to Lansing. He moved to Mount Pleasant. It's only about an hour apart. And then we probably only jammed maybe three or four times before we played our first show. And at this point now, I think we've played as many shows as we have actual practices. For sure, yeah. So it's that hour between, and we're both just really busy. We have a lot going on in our, you know, other lives. And so it's the time that we do have to practice. We try to just make the most of it, but um, it's, uh, I don't know. It's some, the chemistry was just there right off the bat. Thank God, because it's, you know, anybody who's tried to play with drummers before knows that like, it's very hit or miss and it's, <laughs> It's hard enough to find drummers, let alone ones that you can really jive with and, right. and make cool stuff with. So we got really lucky. That's all it was. Just super lucky. Uh, well, hell yeah to Craigslist. Craigslist strikes again. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like like two of my friends up here in, in uh, Minnesota, like they met, um, like one was originally from like Wisconsin and like moved to the Twin Cities and was looking for, you know, people to start a band with. And he found a craigslist ad and met someone go. uh they've been best friends ever since and still do stuff all the time together uh i think i've talked to one or two other bands on the podcast that have also met through like craigslist situations yeah but, you have i mean there's uh, only so many ones. ways you know yeah. you can find people and we neither of us knew anyone in this state we didn't have any connections in any scenes or like you know what i mean so it was it was like that or facebook or I, you know, find someone at a show maybe that you happen to talk to that plays an instrument, you know, like that, those were kind of the only methods I knew of and it happened to work out. So thank God. Yeah. Otherwise and, I'd, I'd still be looking around. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, no, but like even like going to shows and like trying to meet people that way. Um, like I'm not originally from the twin cities. I, I moved here probably like three or four years ago and I know like moving to a new city, going to a show's, and trying to talk to people that you like get into like the new into the scene can be so difficult to do that. So, I mean, that, that at least worked where you had, you had that Craigslist out like way to like get together. Yeah. And then it's not like you're trying to just infiltrate the scene by yourself. Right. You are going at it together Definitely. to try and do this. And, and cause it's yeah. so daunting to do that yeah dude and, and i think we've definitely felt that you know even just like trying to get shows on our own and and kind of make a name for ourselves when when we don't have any connections or we don't know anybody you know it's we really feel like it's like us two against the world sometimes <laughs> you know it's that kind of mentality where we feel like outsiders a lot of the times and we and we you know, whether that's because we're not from Michigan or we're not from this particular scene or, you know what I mean? So funny enough, though, what we found out is that we're both from Fresno, California, originally, which is like one of the shittier parts of the state. Um, so we I don't know. I think it's this sort of like chip on the shoulder, like underdog mentality that I think is like both of us kind of felt with each other right away and mm -hmm. has been sort of like an undercurrent with with Pitt thus far. I mean, it's still crazy that, like, what are the odds that you meet someone both from California and you find out, like, yeah, at one point you guys both were from Fresno. Yeah. And, like, it just adds <laughs> it, it just adds more to the pit lore, I feel like. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, but, like I mentioned, first show was in December. I think it was, like, the 16th or something like that, mid-December-ish. Um, and then, I mean – you guys came out swinging so far in 2023. You have two EPs out so far. Uh, the first one was a self-titled pit, uh, which came out in beginning of January. A uh, nice four song uh, EP, really good introduction as to what, you know, Thank pit you. is and, and can be. Um, and then you had uh, Cynical come out in mid-March. So mm -hmm. at the time of this recording, about a month ago, because uh, yeah. I, I completely forget what day it is, but yeah, we're, we're about a month 15, from yeah. that one. Uh, and in, and now even coming up in June. So a little bit before this, this episode comes out, you have your third EP already coming out um, called bastard of reality, which I mean, obviously you guys are <laughs> meshing so well, if you're able to crank out all these EPs so quick, like 
what's the thought process behind doing that like yeah i mean i i i think it 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 has to do a lot with um how excited we are to actually be in a van but also just like i guess our 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 life tempos we're trying to crank it out as fast as possible while we still got like some left in the tank you know yeah and and it's a matter of like momentum too like i've always just had this feeling of like if we stop we die you know if we if i if i don't post anything on pit instagram for five days it means we're dead you know nobody's gonna pay attention to us anymore if we don't put out an ep every couple months everyone's gonna forget about us you know so like that's that's been the, there's like an urgency behind that. And I think it's informed by like Ian was saying, both of our sort of life circumstances. I think like I'm, uh, you know, Ian's a father. I'm probably will be soon. Like we're at, we're at that point in our lives, you know, where it's like, we, we have this creativity, we have this urgency to like make this music, but we're also very conscious of the reality that we're not going to be able to do this forever, you know? And that like, we want to make the most of it while we can. And we do have this awesome chemistry and we we're able to write songs pretty like we just, before we got on here, we just learned a new song that'll be for the new EP. So we're, you know, we're trying to just crank it out. Um, and it's, it's just satisfying too, to be able to have products, you know, to, to have like stuff that we've made at the end of the day that we can go back to and be proud of. And, and so ultimately it's just about, you know, at the end of the day, looking back on it, feeling good about what we've accomplished and not feeling like we left anything, you know, didn't leave everything on the field, I should say. Right. I'll use that metaphor. Yeah. Now, with this new EP, obviously, I've, I've listened to, to Pitt and, and uh, Cynical. Um, and for people that might not have listened to this this new EP yet, like, what, what can we expect from this one? Like, do you guys know... Like how, how many songs are going to be on it? Like I, I'm yeah. obviously coming in and not knowing anything about it. So like, tell me sure. all the details. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, we got it pretty mapped out at this point. It's going to be four tracks. Um, one of them is going to be a cover of an agnostic front song called victim Ooh. and pain. That's very much this guy's influence. Um, Ian is like the biggest scholar of like eighties, hardcore punk <laughs> that I know of. So he definitely helps bring that to the table um but i can tell you the first three tracks including the cover are going to be really fast shorter uh just kind of um more kind of hardcore punk the last song is going to be our longest song yet and it's going to be just a big old sludge fest (laughs) so that's what i can tell you for that okay hell yeah dude yeah uh obviously for like the the second EP uh, in Cynical, you guys do a cover in that one. Um, like, what was the idea behind doing that cover and then also doing, you know, covering Agnostic Front? Like, everyone knows who that is, and that's, like, kind of a little daunting to, to a really well-known band <laughs> cover. I think I think it had to do a lot with um, – I, my roots do lie in hardcore punk, but, I mean, they're all over the place. The same with Mitch. Like, he he's underselling himself. We both have, like – big hardcore punk roots but we also love like doom and sludge so electric wizard is just i feel like that was just a shoe in for both of us because it's probably besides black sabbath gotta be like a top tier all-time band yeah, for sure for sure and a huge influence on both of us like to, especially dope throne and come my fanatics and like those albums that are just like the heaviest shit imaginable and so like with return trip that was we were just like we want we knew we wanted to do a cover um i think we thought let's do a black sabbath cover but then quickly realized like we need an amazing bass player if we're going to do a proper back black sabbath cover yeah. and so i think we just landed on the one electric wizard song that we knew we could pull off you know we do kind of a shortened version of it and but to be honest, I mean, we played it live once so far and it didn't quite land the way we were hoping it would live. So we're, we're probably going to like revisit it a little bit. But I don't know, as far as the Agnostic Front song, like what made you want to, that was definitely, that was all him as far as picking that one. I think it was, it had to do a lot with, um, I don't know, there's just bands that have been like key in my like bringing up and stuff, I guess, in my, in my roots of hardcore punk. And I just had like a resurgence of hearing like United Blood, which is Agnostic Front's first um, EP before uh, Victim and Pain, the LP. And I was just listening to it and I was like, man, 
I don't know, victim in pain. It, it, it's relatively easy. It's fast. It's short. And I fucking, any, any chance I get to put, to plug like a good hardcore punk band into the scene, I'll do, you know what I mean? That's true. So, yeah, we were, we were uh, pretty heartbroken at one of our first show. I think it was our second show it was in Pontiac and somebody asked the crowd if they knew negative approach which is like detroit's premier hardcore legacy band and the whole cr- the whole room didn't respond like oh. our, there was like a handful of us were like oh hell yeah and nobody <laughs> else knew and they played tied down i think right yeah, after they did a cover of tied down and it was sweet iconic yeah it's, it, it's just like classic detroit hardcore shit and um it was just it was heartbreaking nobody nobody knew it so Crazy. you know if we can if we can inject some electric wizard and an agnostic front and kind of you know both sides of the ball both you know kind of like angles of our influence i think like that's those are very positive things we can bring to the table. Because I think it, it reflects really well on like how we mesh too. Because mm-hmm. I mean, Mitch can tell you I'm a punk drummer, like through and through. Um, slowing down for a lot of <laughs> has been like a first for me. Yeah. Even, even though I love the music. That was in the new song we were just learning. The big challenge was like Ian trying to slow down so I could actually play with him. <laughs> So it's like, I mean, I guess we're just showing both sides of the coin, but all of our influences, you know, that's probably the the, the main thought that went into it. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, kind of bouncing off like what you said, where someone was asking about, uh, you know, an old school hardcore band from, from Detroit and like the crowd not knowing. Um, I think it was like a couple months ago, uh, like NPR here, like the Minnesota NPR version. I don't know how that breaks down but uh, oh, they they started doing they did like a whole documentary series on like the hardcore scene in the twin cities and oh, like as someone that's yeah. nice. from iowa and like growing up the only hardcore thing in iowa everyone knows is slipknot that's as oh that's, shit. that's our, yeah. our go-to <laughs> but awesome. it, was kind of, it was cool to like watch all these uh every week when they would put them out and uh Who's like learn you? about all this like yeah Mm-hmm. unknown hardcore scene in in minnesota that i'm sure some of my friends probably don't know about and that have been here a lot longer and i was like damn this shit is sick so i bet basically yeah. what i'm getting at is for everyone that's in your cities see if anything is out there like brush up on all these old school bands because like they yeah. fucking well rip. god especially i mean minnesota's got an amazing music i mean i husker do and prince and like there's yeah. all kinds of but um uh michigan michigan is arguably the most like storied state in terms of muse american music history like between motown and techno and rap and garage rock and punk like and death metal like all of it like either comes from or has like really strong roots in michigan and so for I don't, it's just a shame for people now to be like playing music that clearly is a a legacy of that or Mm -hmm. like has roots in that to not be aware of where it comes from. It's just a bummer. You know, I would just echo. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's fun to learn about music (laughs) history. It's fun to learn about, you know, where this stuff comes from. So yeah, definitely would encourage people to look up negative approach for sure. It's a good, well, shit. From Minneapolis. I love who's going do. Zen Arcade is like a top 10 or 15 album for sure for me. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and like, so, uh, it's funny enough, I think some of these bands, um, I, I know Husker, Husker Du, I don't know if Agnostic Front was on the list this year, but uh, for Record Store Day, like they're getting repressed or like first time on vinyl for some of their records. Um, like the list is sick and I wish I could spend the money on it this year. Right. Uh, yeah. But I, I got to miss out on it. That's the struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. record store day man that'll get you yeah uh but kind of going back uh obviously first shows were back in december and you've played a, a handful of shows since then you have a handful of midwest shows uh coming up but like what's i know we talked about how like it can be hard getting into the scene and like especially getting booked on all these shows yeah but do you feel like it's come a little easier since you know the first few shows or how do you feel like it's changed Yes, I think so. Um, It's kind of like, I will say first and foremost, like if you have hardcore somewhere in your name or your like genre, 
like that makes things easier right off the bat because there's immediately like a network across the country of hardcore bands and associated bands that you can like sort of like it was amazing before we even had our first EP out before we had any music out there just the fact that we said we're a new like raise our hand and said hey we're a new Michigan sludgy hardcore band people got excited just at the prospect of that like people got excited you know and, and were like excited to see us and hear our stuff and all that and I, I was kind of blown away I was just like I wasn't expecting that at all but I really think it's it, if you have that label that you can sort of lean on a little bit, like the the genre label of hardcore like that, it helps let people know, like, at least that you're part of that universe of music, you know. And then I think once we, we kind of put some feelers out there in terms of like demo recordings and that kind of thing and then I don't know, people have just been incredibly receptive out here. I mean, that's, you know, like we haven't been crazy about every band we've played with, but like they've all been incredibly welcoming and like encouraging and supportive. And um, it's been, I don't know, it's been awesome in that regard. It's definitely, it's all gone much faster and smoother than I would have expected out of the gate for sure. Yeah, Do you no, f- yeah go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say, yeah, absolutely. I feel like the, uh, I would say the scene has been welcoming like really welcoming with open arms but um maybe the music in a way it's just like it's new and it's different so we can't we haven't found our niche of bands that are like us because i don't really know if there are any in michigan uh that are like kind of slow it down a little bit get a little more heavy there's a lot more like newer hardcore bands which is cool but um i mean it seems like every day we're getting more and more people that are into it so maybe it's just one of those things that's going to take a little bit of time for the, for the music to really hit, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, obviously I, I'm a few States away. Uh, so I wasn't sure like how much of a actual like hardcore scene there was. I, like I've had a, probably like a handful of bands on at, that are from Michigan, like the Detroit mm-hmm. area, but they all seem to be like uh, emo or like the Midwest emo uh, sure. side of things. So it's kind of nice to see like the whole flip side on the other side of, of the spectrum where you have like the sludgy hardcoreness going on um, yeah. and keeping yeah. it alive. For sure. We're trying, man. Yeah. I think <laughs> getting, getting a foot in the door, like get hopefully with like uh it's another cool thing about like, we're not a cover band and I don't even think I've ever like thought about <laughs> playing a cover before, but it is yeah. cool to at least like when someone opens the EP and sees return trip by electric wizard then that'll pique their interest to be like who is electric wizard who is agnostic front you know so if we're spreading the gospel at least a little bit i mean i'm i'm okay with that yeah yeah uh and then later in this year after all these midwest shows uh which there might be more coming up you are taking a, a fun little trip tour to uh california and doing a run that's shows right there. hell uh, yeah that's that is uh i'm we're so excited <laughs> about that um yeah we're, so we're starting in san diego we're ending in chico which is again i'm from redding which is way up north about an hour from chico so it's like the closest i'm ever going to get to playing in my hometown because there's there's hardly i mean the fact that they have any sort of a hardcore scene up there is like blows my mind because like it bare nothing like that was going on when I was growing up there, but um, I don't. We're so excited. We have a lot of friends out in California. Um, we have a lot of people who have wanted us to come out there, who have been excited about it, and um, the reception so far has been amazing. Um, yeah, so it's 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 in August, so it's a little ways away, and hopefully we'll have plenty of shows leading up till then. Um, but we can't wait. We're excited. Yeah, I mean that's that's fucking awesome that you guys are basically getting to do like a a return to California trip and take <laughs> Pit out there and do all this. Um, that's was it uh, obviously you have a bunch of people like wanting you guys to come out? Was it just enough people kept bugging you that you were just like, okay, we need we need to make this happen? 
Yeah, I mean, it was sort of like I had heard from enough people out there and it sort of just kind of came together in my mind of like, we could string together enough of these dates and make it feasible. And, and there's people we can stay with out there. And it's not just, you know, it's, if we were going to like Florida or like New York or something like, I, I don't, I don't know about you, but like, I don't know anyone out there. I wouldn't know where to begin, but like, this was because we have so many roots in California. It was kind of like the obvious place for us to look at playing shows and, it just kind of worked out that way. And, and some of the places that, you know, like non plus ultra is this place in LA that's like a underground inclusive arts kind of space um, that when I was living in LA, I always thought like, man, it would be so cool to play here. And, you know, now we're able to do that. So it's, it's phenomenal. Um, and, you know, I don't know what the future holds beyond that tour and like next year for this band and all that, but that's something that I'll definitely be able to look back on and be really, really proud and happy that we made that happen. Fuck yeah. Uh, no, hopefully those, that run of shows goes well. Uh, hopefully, you know, that's great turnout and you get to see uh, all the, all your guys' homies come out for it too. Uh, they better. Like, You're listening. Like that, they better. Yeah, that, that's the shit that I always miss is just getting to a different town and just like always having people that you know or or uh our homies yeah. there that will because like it's always fun yeah you're you're there playing shows but it's also like you get to see your friends and like oh your yeah too. well especially people that i like played music with in california like 10 years ago you know like back in the day and to be able to come back a decade later and and a, feels like a lifetime later and to still be able to do that is such a cool thing um uh i i, th- I wanted to hop, hop back into this this new ep bastard of reality uh it comes out june 2nd so like i said by the time this episode comes out it's been out for uh a week or two i gotta look at the schedule for sure um but oh i hope we I hope we pulled it off again <laughs> <laughs> um but uh i mean like, like you said it's gonna be four songs three original new new uh new cover for agnostic agnostic front um but like what what's what's some other details that like you can you can tell me about this that um that some people might not know yeah so well the so the title black sabbath fans will realize that the title is very clearly a ripoff of master of reality which was their third release so our first release was pit theirs was black sabbath their second release was paranoid ours is cynical and then master of reality, bastard of reality. So we're we're clearly, you know, we're giving big uh, big props to the Godfather's Black Sabbath. Um, but uh, I, you know, the the artwork is by Dina Marshall. Actually, she's a friend of mine from college, a San Francisco-based artist who does a lot of collage and illustration kind of stuff. Um, I think it really. Uh, paints a great picture for what the ep is going to sound like if, if you look at the cover art it's kind of um images of these like biblical demons and devils and sort of things mixed in with images of people moshing in this collage sort of way that um i don't know i i think you know gives a lot to what we're trying to do musically i think um it's it's that blend of frenetic you know, anxious, hardcore punk with like really slow, evil building sludge kind of stuff. So that's the kind of stuff that we love and that's what we want to be creating. So um, that's hopefully what this EP will be. It'll be kind of similar to cynical in terms of um, guitar tones and, and the richness of it and all that. We're going back to the same uh, recording studio, IO studio, just outside of Detroit um, with Patrick Schufoltz. He's a really great guy if people want to hit him up. Um, and then Rye Ellery out in the Bay Area is going to mix it again. Um, they are just the absolute champion. You should go check out their band Greyhound if you haven't. Greyhound in the Bay Area. Oh, there's a spider. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me get this. All right, you can add in there that we're spider killers. <laughs> There we go. Fuck you. Make a song about it. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. but I, I'm stoked to see uh, what this one's like when it's fully done. Uh, nice, 
you know, follow up and, and to see where the transition's going and, and the continuation of Pitt. Um, obviously, like you said, you guys are still working on some stuff tonight. Uh, do you already have in mind, uh, obviously, by the time this comes out, you'll probably be working on like EP6 or something. But like, what can we expect <laughs> going in the future after uh, Bachelor of Reality? Well, well, I don't know, honestly. It's hard to we were just so stoked on the sound of our last one that it's like it's hard to jump ship now because like we really got to ride with the second one we're, we that's the thing about like being new to a state too and not knowing a scene is we also mm-hmm. didn't know where we were going to record our first EP. yeah so trial and error on that because i can i can tell you like historically like living in california ryan ellery in the bay area at shark bite studios like that's who i would go to no question like i would drive five hours to go record with them but like out here it was kind of a crapshoot we didn't really know and we first went to rust belt studios for our first ep and it's an amazing studio it's like it's they've done incredible records like all kinds of genres but we just didn't feel like they knew what we were going for necessarily. Mm. And, the, and that might have been on us. Like we hadn't communicated that properly. But I mean, we left that session after like six hours or whatever, not having the guitar tone we wanted at all. You know, like, and that's, it's just a bummer. But again, Ryan Ellery mixed the shit out of that, got it to where we wanted. And then, you know, for the second one, recording with patrick at io studio was right off the bat sort of like he he got what we were going for got us the sound we wanted so we're going back to him again so we're excited to like have that sort of like automaticness of it again that we had last time for sure you know because it's it's tough to go into a studio that hasn't really heard your stuff before doesn't really know what you're going for And you try to just sort of articulate it, but it takes, you know, hours or days sometimes to really like get what you want out of it. So, but as far as like, like other releases in the future, I mean, if you follow the, uh, the Black Sabbath discography, we've got volume four coming up. We've got Pit Bloody Pit coming up. So we'll see though. We'll see. Well, you know, at some point a full length would be amazing. Um, you know, that's a matter of if we have like a studio or a, a label that can help support that kind of thing. Um, I think I can spoil it right now because I think by th- at this point we'll have announced it. But those first three EPs we're actually going to be releasing on a 12 inch vinyl record uh, probably early next year. So that's through twice as high records, uh, friends of ours in Virginia um and then glaze music which is the music collective that we're a part of that's based uh, mostly in california but all over the country um but so we'll definitely early next year we'll have that physical release if there's more beyond that hopefully we'll have announced it by now so dude fuck yeah like it's, it's always something special like i i since i do the podcast i can't really like put anything that i do like on format i i know i think i've I think I've seen a couple of podcasts like put some of their episodes to like tape. And <laughs> yeah, that's it's gonna be looks, really it, good episodes. Dude, yeah, exactly. Like it looks cool, and that'd be cool to have. But at the same time, it's like, I yeah, I'd have to find like the perfect episodes to do that. But like yeah. to be able to put any of the stuff that you're working on on a physical format to hold and to have, like I that's what you it's, want. It's gonna right? be great. I mean, yeah. that's 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 kind of the ball game at the end of the day. Is like that's what you really want you know and and i think like i've been in bands in the past where we just did tapes and i kind of hate tapes personally like i just think they sound like shit and it's like if you're going to go through you're going to spend all this money and all this time on recording process and mixing and mastering like you want the end product to reflect all of that and to really yeah. incorporate all of that and that's where vinyl will actually do that in a way that neither of us have able you know been able to experience before like with other bands so yeah definitely exciting fuck yeah uh are you guys i I know this is still a ways out but are you guys just doing uh just playing black or you gotta try and do a a color uh wave in there i I mean (laughs) i don't know i think it depends on how it's perceived you know like well we're gonna probe it and see like um if they're 
there should be a market for it, but right. you know, we'll see how the first one sells. And then well, we've, we've flirted with the idea, you know, because it would, I guess like the whole black and red theme, it'd be cool to do like a red, like a low press of red or something. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kinda. Cause like the, the other thing you gotta like almost factor in since you're doing all three on the one pressing, uh, a color that like represents all three EPs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think doing like a, a sing, like a small pressing of red and then obviously like the rest black, I think that'd be pretty sick. No, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge sucker for vinyl too, like huge vinyl collector. And I know I'm always the guy that's like, there's only a hundred on this cover. <laughs> I gotta get it. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah, I, I, do, I feel you there. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we've talked about it. So it's definitely a, it's a possibility, probably a large possibility actually. Okay, sweet, sweet. And then, uh, obviously, you, you said you, you're, you're, the pressings are going to be done through, um, uh, sorry. The, yeah, <laughs> twice as high records. Twice they're high. they're helping us, yeah, put this out. So we're going through a pressing place in Cleveland. I can't remember the name of it, though. I can't either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you yeah. know, everyone that's listening, be on the lookout for that announcement and uh, where you, you can get uh, those pre-orders and, and do all that fun stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll talk links kind of towards the later half of the episode. Sweet. Sounds good. Um, but as, as we start to transition here, um, I want to make sure I covered as much pit lore as, as I, as I could, uh, was there anything that I missed pit you guys, uh, the upcoming EP or any previous EPs that you want the people to know about? Um, I think people should know that this guy, Ian, so the opening track, Cynical, from our last EP, Cynical, um, he learned that the morning that we recorded it. Oh, so, <laughs> so if you listen to that now and you listen to how fucking great those drums are, just remember that that was probably the second time he played it through is when he recorded it. So... I had I had played it a lot on my own for weeks leading up to that, but that was, anyways. <laughs> people should know that. That's that's fucking amazing to know that. Like, props <laughs> to you, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's a, I mean, I guess that's the great thing about just having chemistry. You know what I mean? It's it's kind yeah, of man. easy to to bounce off each other. Well, that's the thing is, I yeah, I I had total faith going into it that he would in fact learn it that morning and then we would drive to the studio and he could lay it down and that's what happened so um yeah man chemistry is everything yeah well uh like i said i'm stoked uh with everything he's got going on i I'm, I'm stoked to see what uh what the next uh iteration and down the line is for pit and see how far you guys take this appreciate it man, Thanks, man. So us too yeah <laughs> Um, well, this is obviously beers with fans. Uh, all these episodes, you don't have to be drinking any alcohol because I will definitely most of the time do that for you. Uh, <laughs> but I know you fine Gold. gentlemen are drinking uh, uh, a couple beverages tonight. What are you drinking on this fine Sunday night? I am drinking a uh, Bell's Two Hearted IPA. Bell's is based in Kalamazoo. They are one of Michigan's flagship breweries, and Two Hearted has been ranked the best beer in America several times. And I'm, I'm uh, going with old classic, old faithful, some Modelo, simple man. Yeah. Not he, hard to please. I, I asked him what kind of beer he wanted. He said Modelo or any Mexican beer. <laughs> so that's where he's at. It's like I'm the California. You know? yeah, dude, I'm, I'm you. representing the finest <laughs> of Michigan right here. So, although I'm, I'm drinking out of a Lost, Clo Lost Coast Brewery glass, this is Humboldt, California. Okay. So, we're representing both at the same time. Uh, so, before I get to what I'm drinking, uh, on your note of, of uh, Modelo's, like, that's, so back home, that's like me and my cousins all drink Modelo's all the time when we're, we're hanging out. Shit. And uh, probably, really like, Three years ago, I went out and visited friends that had just moved to like San Diego, and we we went to a couple of different uh, bars when we were going around, and I was so happy that I was because like growing up in Iowa, like it's bush light. That's all you're gonna fucking get, and you're gonna deal with it. Um, so it was great to go to like different right. bars and actually have them have Modelo. Yeah, whether it was on t like not on tap, but like at least in there, so you could order it. I was like, dude, this is fucking heaven. 
Oh yeah, man. Like Pacifico, Tecate, Dos Equis. You Madonna. can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. At a at a bar in Hollywood or not Hollywood in Koreatown in Los Angeles that I used to live down the street from. They had what was called the what it was this HMS Bounty in Koreatown. They had the Wise Man Special where for I think four dollars you could get a shot of tequila and a tecate. Four dollars. Like that shit will yeah. <laughs> Like you that'll ruin you quickly <laughs> uh but what i'm drinking today is you know a good old pbr oh uh, you, you know can't go wrong, can't go wrong. Taste like college yeah award-winning you know got that blue yeah. ribbon so that's all that matters <laughs> their lifetime champ <laughs> yeah big pbr guy myself yeah too. oh yeah the top tier shit beer if you will <laughs> yeah uh, i respect it <laughs> Uh, the early logos that I used to do for the podcast, I just ripped off the PBR logo. Uh, sure. Still classic. Still clutch. It's absolutely oh, classic. Yeah. 100%. I can understand that completely. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's there's the beer segment for this episode. Uh, cool. Some good brews had all around. Uh, but now we're going to kind of transition to the later half of these episodes, which are always my favorite part of the episodes. Uh, this is where I get to hear some stories from your guys' time of music. Uh, whether it's shows, tours, time recording, um, they can be Pit or any other project uh, previous. Uh, as I normally say, they can be anything horrendous to tremendous or any adjective <laughs> in between. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. I feel, I don't know. Some of our, our shows are pretty tame. Yeah. I feel <laughs> the, the craziest <laughs> shit that we've had to deal with so far is like driving home from Grand Rapids when it's like a blizzard outside. Oof. <sighs> And we're like terrified for our lives. And we're just like, was this really worth it to play our 10 minute set? You know, yeah. <laughs> but it was, and we're here. So it was, but um, I don't know, man, I've had, I, uh, so I've been playing music for about probably 12 years at this point. Um, and, you know, this was mostly in California and I, I just remember shit like, um, you know, we in Santa Cruz, we had a house where we would throw probably two shows a month and the cops would come every single time. And it was just like clockwork. It was like we'd get done right at 10 o'clock. They would show up, tell everyone to leave. And we would just be like, yeah, we know we got it. We It's figured out. Um, but it, that was just that was just life for a long time um, dealing with that or, you know, like being on the road. And I remember the. I remember getting pulled over and the guys in my band were passing around a spliff and had an open bottle of whiskey in the back and they spilled it all over the carpet right as the cop is walking up to my car and we somehow didn't get in any trouble for any of that. Um, so I don't know, there's been shit like that, but then like, as far as our stuff, I don't know. Yeah, there's nothing really crazy that I've seen that goes on at uh, any of the shows that we've been to. I, I would say the uh, one of the wilder things I've seen was the Ham's House in East Lansing, yeah, which was a uh, which is a great little punk house. Um, they <laughs> they built. We played there back in January, and they had just built this outdoor like snow shelter sort of thing. <laughs> where they put a bunch of like planks of wood on the top of it and covered it. And it was, it was just like the jankiest looking little like igloo that they could have made, but they were so proud of it. And it was packed with people at this show and people are like smoking weed in there and they're just enjoying it. And then it's, and then it collapsed like <sighs> several times throughout the show and they kept rebuilding it and it would collapse again. And I went to law school and the like and the, the like lawyer in me is just like thinking about the many myriad liabilities going on there but like god bless these kids they don't give a shit you know so <laughs> it's funny i don't know like i'm i'm 30 i just turned 30 he you're what 26 yeah. and like we're constantly playing around like 18 to 21 year olds you know and it's just a different world. I'm just not in that world anymore. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's a whole different mindset. Like I, like, 
like I said, like I used to be in that world, you know, when, when the cops would come every night and like, well, that was just part of life, but it's like, it's a weird thing to sort of reconcile now, you know, cause we're like, we're playing this music that's like very crazy and energetic or whatever but it's like at the end of the night i think we both like feel kind of old usually yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh i guess i guess there is a pretty decently funny one the the last show that we played this uh this dude i guess he bought um a house that used to be a credit union like turned it into oh, like, yeah. a lovable home <laughs> yeah and then yeah. it was like in the middle of nowhere this is in muskegon yeah in muskegon and um it was a cool little place, some old, an older dude, and I, I don't know how many people were actually living in that house, but it was an older group of dudes, like 50s, 60s, that ran the place, and um, they had us out, which was cool of them, but it was funny because we were playing in the basement, and there's a fucking pole right <laughs> yeah. in the middle, like a like a support beam uh, right yeah. in the middle of the whole, the whole show. Just asking so, to give someone a concussion. Oh, yeah yeah these kids are are skanking around moshing around dancing whatever and um usually i'm locked in when i'm playing the drums so like i don't really look up i can't really tell you what the crowd's doing or if i could remember i'm usually just in my own my own world but uh, out of the corner of my eye i just see a kid eat the pole face first like <laughs> and i i like i stumbled for a second because i started laughing and i was like oh man yeah good times i they actually had us move our like the drum set and the cabinet so that we were angled to where they could like avoid the pole but i kept mm. seeing people get pushed into it it's inevitable yeah. an obstacle right in the middle of the dance floor i remember during someone else's set uh somebody came and told the owner of the place that one of the pipes was leaking that there was water coming through and they just like <laughs> they they wouldn't checked it out but they didn't do anything about it and i just you know the whole time was just thinking like like that's a problem like you guys gotta <laughs> figure out what's going on there but they're just like ah fuck it we'll just you know whatever damage they do during the show we'll just let them do that and then we'll break right. out afterwards oh yeah. yeah so it's it's a lot of that going on you know but we will we will play anywhere anytime we don't give a shit so oh yeah yeah uh i remember there there used to be this venue uh, a long time ago i think i think it hasn't been there for at least four or five years now uh but it was basically like in the back of this record store there was like a a room maybe the size of like you're looking at my bedroom right now like yeah. maybe a little bit bigger than this right not crazy big and it had like a stupid high drum riser for no fucking reason but like <laughs> there there would be some sick shows that i'd seen there and uh there would also be like a pole like right about like here uh and the stage is like up here like you're you're pretty close and the amount of people that would just smoke that thing and it like originally <laughs> that room wasn't that big so like it was just always in the way and then they like tore down a wall and like expanded the room a little bit so it wasn't like it was more like back further in the crowd but i was just like yeah. this is insane just to like try and one as like a dude that doesn't get in the pit because yes i'm afraid right. of getting hit uh, I, hey, in the I, back, I gotta you, avoid yeah. that pole just to like see and shit man speaking of the the pit stuff like that is something that's fucking different now like and i i said i feel like i sound old when i say this but like the whole like crowd killing thing that people do now where it's like everybody's a ninja all of a sudden <laughs> and they're doing these windmills and shit like that used to be only reserved for like corny ass like metal core shows and hmm. stuff and now that's like the default hardcore thing. And it's, it's really bizarre to me. I don't know what happened to like regular mosh pits. Now they're like looked down upon for some reason. Maybe that's just in Michigan. I don't know. But for the record, we're totally okay with like push pits, you know, with people just like having a good time running in circles. Like that's totally fucking fine. You don't have to like be a ninja. Right. But man i don't know i'd never i i've been to so many punk shows where it's like it, it's like that you know there's kids like just running in a circle dancing pushing each other no no harm no foul which is cool uh i went to go see a show in virginia when i was living in north carolina and terrorizer the grindcore band was headlining it was a weird bill but i, I went out for for them and then um who else but gel played um bib 
armor which i'm a huge fan of those tallahassee florida bands um but there was a lot of like uh newer hardcore bands too and i remember fucking looking at that pit and there had to be goddamn like d1 linebackers in there bro (laughs) i was actually it was the only one i ever had to like step back and i was like no i'm good i'm not i'm not getting in there that's that shit was scary (laughs) <laughs> yeah That's no beginning. like it's like i haven't been to ma- too many hardcore shows uh lately so i don't know how it is at least in the in the twin cities if they're like the the crowd i hope it's mantras. different man i hope it's not yeah uh, yeah but uh i remember i remember specifically and i think i told this story before but it's just one of my favorite fucking memories is uh i went to go see real friends and neck deep play in iowa city one year and they it was a weird i don't know how they why they did it that year but it was uh i don't remember who the opening band was but then it went cruel hand then neck deep and real friends and peak like it was like peak like neck deep and real friends so like you got like 15 year old girls there that are there to see them already right. have like the merch that they just went and bought and like they're, they're all <laughs> they're front. Yeah. right yeah already on and, and everything and uh so the first band gets done there's like five rows of just all these girls and cruel hand goes up there and the singer of cruel hands like uh just so y'all know like he points at them and talks to them specifically he's like just so y'all know uh neck deep doesn't play for another 45 minutes uh have fun and then they hit that first note and the entire circle because like the, in iowa we're all spread out uh like iowa city's one scene yeah, and Des Moines is like another that are two and a half hours away, but there's a group of people, at least there used to be, that would if there was a hardcore band playing anywhere basically in the state, they would roll out to those shows. Oh, which God. I mean, they 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 called themselves a collective, uh, but they were all like super nice dudes, and like sometimes you would have some that would like, crowd kill a little bit, but it really was just like they're there to to listen to hardcore music, do yeah. their thing, have a good time, but. Cruel Hand hit that first note. Everyone that goes to shows knew what was about to happen, so that pit opened up hard, and those girls were in a rough time. Uh, yeah. Like they were far enough up front where they were definitely getting jammed into the stage, yeah. but it, it was I, the funniest thing. Oh, dude, I I remember <laughs> like being back in <laughs> back in fucking like 2012 in Santa Cruz. I remember the one, one of the few like sort of fights I've ever been in, in my life. That's a good story. <laughs> uh, basically I, I, I was working at cold stone. I was in college at the time. I was working at cold stone creamery, which is a God awful job. I got off work and I biked over to the pioneer, which was like the local hardcore venue in Santa Cruz. There was some, I can't even remember who was playing. I remember going in there and my buddy, Ted, is like not that he's not that tall he's like pretty small dude he's in the back of the venue and there's this like 400 like this guy is like massive like like upwards of 300 pounds like and he's windmilling and he's moving backwards and he's just like threatening everybody within like a five foot radius of him and he kept almost like decking my buddy ted in the back and so i went and stood by him and was trying to like fend off this guy and that guy he he went back and he made contact with me and he hit me right on the head and i just dropped to the ground like it was just in an instant i opened my eyes something in my fight or flight response told me to go tackle him <laughs> so i did i tackled him and the next thing i knew i was on the ground and there were probably four guys around me kicking me in the stomach and they were like, that's my fucking brother, dude. You don't fuck with, you know. And I find out later that these are, this is like a crew of dudes from San Jose who comes down to all the Santa Cruz shows to like fuck people up basically, <laughs> like for fun. And I was the guy that they fucked up that night. Oh but, my God. <laughs> with Tsunami or San Jose, where Tsunami's from and Spy and like a bunch of big hardcore bands now. Um, and shout out to San Jose. I love San Jose. I lived there after college. Like that's, it's a great city. Uh, shout out to spy as well. They're fantastic. But, um, anyways, yeah, like, I don't know, people, people are weird and territorial and they can be hostile in that environment. And it's just, it's bizarre to me because I've seen so much camaraderie and community and like good things happening in that environment that to see people come in 
with the sole purpose of like fucking people up is like bizarre to me it's so strange it sucks it's like a it seems like a reincarnation of what fucking like uh jocks and stuff used to do in the early 80s or like in the 80s hardcore scene be a yeah. bunch of dudes who had come up just to beat kids up and then we right. didn't care about the music yeah. you know what i mean yeah it's yeah it's just, it's just pretty crazy thankfully like i said i haven't experienced that much of that in or much of that in the midwest you you'll have like a couple at least in like iowa when i would go to some hardcore shows you'd see a few people that would crowd kill and then uh if you it's, you it's hope big that someone here, just man. got a big uh but yeah uh, it's weird i don't know I, we don't know what to do about it i guess i got a funny one should i tell the one that i told yeah, you earlier yeah yeah no, it's not a it's not a crowd killing thing, but it, it was a funny uh experience at least. I was laughing. But maybe that's just my fucked up sense of humor. But there was a show, I, the band's name eludes me now, but they had a they had a shtick. They were a good band. Um I think they were like they were kind of gothed out, like they wore the 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 blood and the eyeshadow and stuff. And the singer would do it a bit where they would they had a coffin and they'd put him in the coffin. And then they'd fucking they'd pass the coffin around the crowd, and uh, he would sing while being in the coffin. Which I guess, like the premise, is it could be all right if done properly. But right. uh, they didn't choose the right people to do it because I guess there's like a designated group of people that would they knew where to go. They'd map it out before or whatever. But um, they're fucking carrying this thing, and they end up taking the dude outside too far, and they're like, oh, no, this isn't it. This isn't it. And I'm watching the whole thing. I'm not even paying attention to the band at this point because I'm like, where's this guy going? Um, they come back, and they try to set him back down on stage, and the people carrying it drop it on the guitarist. His back turned, hits him in the leg, crushes the dude's pedal board. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And he had, like, a, a nice pedal board, a bunch of pedals. I can only imagine how much it costs. Um, and I'm like sitting there trying to get this. Day. It's like, a, thankfully, the singer is a small dude, but I could only imagine how much that coffin weighed empty. So right. that on your leg and your pedals, I'm like trying to lift this this coffin off of this pedal board. And then like, I don't know, it was, just, it was funny. Probably shouldn't have been laughing, but it was funny. And then people were just like, man, fuck this. They just started leaving. Uh, after seeing that, but the risk you run by having a coffin as part of your set yeah, you want to do theatrics you gotta have yeah it right you gotta be ready for it i'm sure it was only like maybe i'm sure that was like one of the last shows that they decided like oh maybe we should not do this anymore yeah that guitarist is like fucking it's near the coffin <laughs> yeah. drop it on my leg again i'm yeah. done secretly that guitarist hated the coffin uh, stick the entire time but he was like this is the final straw yeah that's yeah. it that's it after you almost broke my leg <laughs> i'm done <Jeez. laughs> uh, yeah good times uh no yeah i i couldn't imagine having a coffin or let alone a coffin with a person land on my leg or my <laughs> pedal board uh and i don't really, i don't have a pedal board at all but i would probably be pissed yeah yeah <laughs> it's a lot of money just crunched away for right. a stupid little gimmick it, it, it had reminded me of it because at the last show that we played at the credit union it was pretty crowded and people kept stepping on his pedal oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that like key moments in the song i'm like god damn it there's no fucking distortion here and i look and somebody's standing on my pedal so yeah jeez yeah. it happens so yeah. part of the deal <laughs> uh well i mean dudes bitch ian this has been uh, a great great night great conversation uh Absolutely, man. i i want to i want to thank you for hounding me as much as you did uh i like i said it's been a crazy year uh and I, it's like a weird place right now but i'm thank you for for hounding me and, and keep course, me bro. we knew it'd be a good one today yeah um uh if anyone's looking for merch music or just pit in general where can they find it so pit michigan on instagram at pit michigan uh we're pit michigan band camp um you can find we're pit on spotify apple music uh but all our merch is on the band camp uh i would just say follow us on instagram we're we're pretty active on there obnoxiously so and uh, you'll you'll have more than enough information coming at you from the Instagram. So just follow us on there. Hell yeah. Uh, 
yeah depending on where you found depending where you found this episode uh whether it's you know facebook twitters instagram or the youtubes and you got to see their lovely faces like i did tonight uh check the description below and hit all the hyperlinks make sure you follow them on all the socials and stay up to date on everything that pit has going on and be ready for you know bachelor of reality which is already out and should have like a million streams already but be ready for uh release four five six and seven and so on there you go yeah man not stopping Uh, before we fully take off do you have any last words for the listeners uh no man just shout out to you really appreciate you this was great yeah thank you a lot man i appreciate that uh you guys are like i said you guys are killing it i'm stoked to see what the future holds hopefully you know california tour goes well and uh see where it takes you from there hope so man we're excited all right uh like i said follow pit stay up to date and uh I mean, I'll catch everyone on the next episode. Sounds good. All right. Later, man.